Well, good morning and welcome to the Vineyard. We're glad you could join us as we're in the middle of a very, very important series on the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know if you know this or not. It's no secret. I'm a fan, lover, big advocate of the Holy Spirit. I think he's everything. Uh, For 45 years, my wife and I have uh, lived in the Holy Spirit's presence, and we built this uh, church with his help, and just every story we have is because the Spirit has worked with us, touched our lives, changed us, but I'm still surprised how many people are confused. They're a little uh, concerned that the Holy Spirit is sort of crazy, does strange things. Uh, Honestly, that's not the truth, but when we have misinformation, we sometimes get ourselves in a jam, don't we? Well, our message today is Holy Spirit as Helper, and we're going to get into some real nitty-gritty things about helping us in everyday parts of our life. Sometimes we think of Holy Spirit as Helper, we think of all the real big things, we're buying a house, or what school we're going to, or ministry time up here. I'm talking about Holy Spirit every day, every moment, all the time. He wants to get involved, and actually, that's uh, really good because most of us need help on a regular basis. In fact, let me divert for a moment from the message and teach you the most important vineyard prayer in the history of our movement. Our movement's about 40-some years old. This is a real difficult prayer to learn. Actually, it's not. It's real. It's two words. It goes like this. Help, Lord. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Or you can reverse it if you want. You can say, Lord, help. Or you could say, Holy Spirit, help. He's real generous about letting you interchange names. But it's, you got to get his attention, and the water's over the dam, and it's coming fast, and you can't stop it, and it's time for help, all right? And it, it works. And so if you'll remember that prayer in tough times, your life will be changed. If you don't hear anything else, it's help, Lord, all right? Okay, Jesus did promise us before he left in John 14, 16, he said, I will ask the Father, and he will send you another helper. In a later passage, we'll see helper is identified in the Bible as the Holy Spirit. So it is a helper. He's the one who does it. Diane's book, if you've never read about the Holy Spirit, it's Holy Spirit, uh, the gift of live-in help. And uh, hello, Holy Spirit, the gift of live-in help. I think you'd enjoy the book. He's with us forever. It's not like friends that are here today, maybe gone tomorrow. Some of us even had parents that have left us. Holy Spirit's going to stay with you in good days and in your bad days. Let's pray and see how he wants to work with us. Father, you're the best. We just want to thank you that when you took Jesus to heaven, you sent the Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you in our church. We welcome you in our community. And we welcome you inside our hearts and our lives. Take charge. Lead us where we need to go. Teach us about who you are and what you're doing. Amen. Well, I want to start today's story with an incident I had with a neighbor recently. I live in Devonshire subdivision. It's in southwest Champaign. I've lived there for 45 years, kind of a handyman around there, fix things and kind of meddle in people's business. But at any rate, most of you know I'm a leader, and I rise to leadership wherever I go. And sometimes I do so by choice, and sometimes I get drafted. Well... I ended up being president of Devonshire Homeowners. Like I said, 273 homes, and uh, it's not on my bucket list, but somebody needed to do it. And I was standing there when the president said, I can't do it anymore because of health problems. I got nominated. Now, mind you, in 50 years that we've existed, we don't have any formal process in our bylaws for how the president is picked. They're just kind of whoever do it, whoever the poor guy is or woman that's standing there. So that's not the story, though. Our neighborhood, our co- we have a covenant. A covenant, for those of you who may not live in a subdivision, means that this is how we'll live in this neighborhood. Uh, sometimes it'll tell you what color your houses can be, what fences you can have. Ours is very loose, very general, but it does have a clause in there. Please don't park your business trucks and vehicles in your driveway or on the street. Please don't put recreational vehicles in your driveway or on the street, RVs, that kind of thing. Just be a good neighbor. Just So... You know, it's all good politicians. I communicate with my subjects, so to speak, sending out emails. And I sent out an email recently, and I said, please remember that um, one of our agreements is that we won't park these vehicles in our driveway. Within two days, they get an email back. 
how dare you tell me not to park my vehicle in the driveway? And the emails start flowing, and it's like, wow, well, what did I do to irritate this guy so much? And, he's, and then he's, he's writing me more letters. He says, I'm going to take legal action against you, on and on. I'm thinking, boy, I'm starting to get mad. <laughs> I'm an old military guy, and I've seen some big weapons. I thought, hmm, if I get my hands on some of those... I described to Diane Julie what I was going to do with the house and the vehicle. They said it was so bad I couldn't tell you specifically what I had in mind. They banned me from sharing, but just say it was destructive. They said that isn't going to work. Then it gets worse. Then he sends me a registered letter and says, I have a contact an attorney and we'll be filing a cease and desist order. I had to look up what a cease and desist order is. Uh, it didn't sound good. They could sue me, put me in jail. It, this is a volunteer position. And, and his argument is that I'm an imposter because not everyone of the 270 houses voted on me, therefore I'm an imposter, and I have no legal authority, and on and on and on. I'm not registered with the state. Boy, I am furious. Uh, but I did have the sense to say, help, Lord. And the famous prayer started to work on me. Now, how many of you have ever been in a similar situation, not necessarily in your neighborhood, but with a person that you care about or at work or your boss or you're the employee and you can't stand the boss or, um, you know, just a squabble of some kind? Maybe it's with your family or your spouse. It's just you don't want to love them at all. The question becomes, how are you going to respond? Now, Paul uses a phrase. I'm going to, I'll say more on this in a moment. Are you going to respond in the flesh or in the spirit? Flesh simply is a code word for saying in the natural. I'm going to use flesh because Paul uses that, as I want to tie it closely into what he's saying. But are you going to respond in the flesh or are you going to respond naturally? And boy, I, I had some great ways to respond. Now, I'd have been in deep trouble. I probably would be in jail with some big fines and maybe worse if I'd responded. But I said, okay, I'm, I, I need to slow down here and see what the Lord is saying. Where is he taking us? Let's get some Bible help out of Galatians. And I'm going to be reading passages from the Passion Translation. It's an interesting translation in this chapter. But Galatians is a book where Paul has started the church in the area of Galatia, uh, the people have more or less forgotten the good start, and they're slipping back into their old ways. He's a little frustrated. Uh, he says, look, you've forgotten the cross of Jesus Christ. You've forgotten the finished work, the shed blood that made you new creations, righteous. It, it gave you holiness. You were forgiven. You're clean, filled with the Spirit. What is going on with you? He said, you're new. You're righteous. By the way, that word righteous is one of the most precious words in your new covenant. Read it every time. About 100 times it shows up in the New Covenant, especially in Paul's writings. It means you were made right so God could live with you. You could live with God. He could be partnered with you. You and he could be one. He could be in union with you. The Holy Spirit could take up dwelling place. You want to be righteous. So just, and righteousness doesn't have anything to do with your behavior. Doesn't mean you'll never sin again, but it makes sure that you have ability to get access to the Father and the Spirit can live in you. Got it? So don't, don't tell me you're righteous on good days and not righteous on bad days. That's not the Bible. Okay, that's, that was for free. I just threw that in. So Paul goes on and he says, listen, beloved ones, in verse 13, God has called us to a life of freedom. That's a precious word. Don't view this wonderful freedom as an excuse to set up a base of operations in the natural realm, or you could say the self-life or the, the flesh, okay? Okay. Constantly love one another and be committed to serving. See, Paul's contrasting walking in the spirit, walking in the flesh. That, that's the choice. He says, if you're walking in the flesh, here's some things you're doing. The behaviors of the self-life are obvious. Chasing after things instead of God. Manipulating others. Hatred of those who get in your way. Senseless argument. Resentment of others who are favored. Tenter, temper tantrum, tantrums. Angry quarrels, only thinking of yourself. How about this one? Being in love with your own opinions. Mm. 
Most of us didn't score too well coming through that list. All right? That, that includes me. And, and so those are works of the flesh. I didn't even mention immorality and lustful thoughts and uh, wild parties and stuff like that. I, I left those out to try to uh, make it a little more palatable. You might not be so guilty, but we're fairly in trouble if we choose to go that way. And he ends that passage by saying, those who do those, these things will not inherit the kingdom. Now, that doesn't mean you'll go to hell. It means you won't live in the righteousness, peace, and joy of the kingdom. You'll live in turmoil. You'll have pressure going on all the time. Your stomach will be churning. You, you, you just won't live. See, Christ died that you might be free of the ways of this world and live the life of the kingdom in this age. That's, that's the story of the Bible. We get to live in the future right now. People always say, that when is the future coming? It came 2,000 years ago. You just happened to catch up with it. Got it? Okay, so that's another message. We, we have a lot of messages we could actually talk about in here, don't we? See, he goes on, he says, make a choice. We'll talk a lot about choices. What choice are you going to make? Galatians 5, 16, when your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit, you hinder him from living freely within you. See, when you're pursuing that list of things, you know, you're pursuing your own opinions, you're pursuing uh, things rather than God, you hinder his ability to speak to you. You don't want to do that. You want to hear loud and clear from the Holy Spirit. You, you want to be able to make a choice. It says the Holy Spirit's cravings hinder the self-life from uh, dominating you. So you want to let the Holy Spirit be free to crave the things he craves. We'll talk about what those are in just a moment. See, so if I had an action step for here, choose to walk in the Spirit, choose to walk away from the, what, what the uh, other side is trying to tell you to do. How does that work? We'll be filled with the Spirit every day. You jump out of bed, Holy Spirit, what are we going to do today? Holy Spirit, I need your help today. Holy Spirit, there's going to be some challenges. I'm going to be in over my head. Probably five to ten times a day I pray that famous two-word two prayer, help, Lord. Holy Spirit, what are we going to do? I'm in trouble. I'm in over my head. Now, one of the things I think happens is that people don't always know how the Spirit talks to them. Most people think it's sort of like this. Happy, turn left. Happy, stop. Wait for the cars. No, I have only in my whole lifetime heard one time audibly the Holy Spirit speaking to me. He speaks in many, many different ways. Let me tell you an old, old story. All of you have heard this, but it really illustrates the point. As we hear about floods and stuff, there were some in Kentucky, uh, Fort Myers, other places had floods. There's a guy whose house is about to be flooded, and so he prays, Lord, I want you to deliver me, and the water gets up a couple of feet, and the National Guard comes driving their big trucks through. He said, hop on, we'll get you out of here. He said, no, no, I prayed the Lord's going to deliver me. The water rises, and he's up on the second story, and a boat comes by and says, hop on, we'll get you out of here. No, no, I prayed. He gets up to the uh, roof line. He's sitting on the roof. Helicopter comes by and says, hop on, we'll get you out of here. He says, no, no, I prayed. The water rises. He drowns, goes to heaven, and he meets the Lord, and he says, Lord, I prayed three times for you to get me out of there. And the Lord said, yeah, and I sent you help three times, and you turned it down. I think lots of us don't realize when the Spirit is speaking to us. He might speak to us out of the Bible, dream, another person. Uh, he might give us wisdom. So be alert that God's always speaking. In fact, there's a word I absolutely love. It's called co-creation. God is co-creating with you to make you the person he has predestined you to be. Now, did you hear that? Co-creating. Co means there's at least two people involved, you and him. He's going to speak to you because he wants you to do something for him. He has a purpose for you and me. Some of you say, oh, he, he passed me along. I go, no, he didn't. Well, I'm too old. No, you're not. If, you know, as the old line goes, if you're not dead, you're not done. Some of us checked out long ago, and the Lord said, no, get back in the game. You know, I don't care what you feel like, and so forth. All right. So having said that, let's go back to my story in the neighborhood. Now, once I calmed down, I remember John 14, 26. I read John 14, 16. It says in 14, 26, it says, the helper, then that's the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance things I have said to you. 
Oh, so he's going to bring things to remember. The first thing the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance is one of my favorite passages, Psalm 34, 19. Many are the troubles or problems of the righteous. Who's righteous? Us, me. But he delivers us from all of them. Oh, so you knew this was going to happen, and you got to deliver me. You can kind of sit back a little smug. You can say, God, I'm in trouble again. What are you going to do about it? Okay, now, you got to be careful. Don't be too much of a smart aleck, but um, (laughs) he he does want to help you out. He doesn't want me to go down in a pile of flames. So the first thing the Holy Spirit said is, don't you know some people that know that guy? And I knew a neighbor that knew him pretty well. And I said, he said, go talk to that person. Then he said, there's an attorney who lives on the other side. Why don't you go talk to him and have him call the attorney that's about to send you the cease and desist law. He actually went and met with the guy and basically talked him out of sending. The guy said, yeah, this probably is a dumb idea since there's no legal procedure to pick a president anyhow. A judge would throw it out. You know, you're just appointed. And so, wow, the whole thing is ending well. And the guy who originally started all the trouble, said, well, I really wasn't that upset. (laughs) People have a funny way of showing how upset they are. Um, But God bailed me out. is isn't how I'd have bailed it out. I mean, there'd been a a spot of, you know, scorched earth (laughs) if I'd have had my my ways. But I I kind of, I remind myself every now and then, you know, happy, it's a good thing you're not God. I, I just couldn't handle it. Remember that uh, Bruce Almighty movie or what was that, God Almighty or whatever it was? You know, he realized he couldn't be God either. So I just figured it out quicker than that guy did that I'm probably not God. See, what God wants to do is fill us with his fruit that we can give away rather than the anger of ourself. Ourself will get us in our trouble. What is that fruit? Well, Galatians goes on in 522. This is what he wants to produce in each of us. He wants to produce love in all its varied expressions, joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life of virtue, or you might say goodness, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, strength of spirit, or self-control. How many of you think the world could use a little more of those nine attributes? Guess who's supposed to be having them flowing out of it? That's you and me. You look at that person and say, there's supposed to be fruit flowing out of you, all right? And don't be so surprised. God wants to use them too, even though they're sitting beside you, you know. He doesn't just want to use you. And let me tell you, I'm not talking about a one-day occurrence. So just this past two weeks, we had another opportunity. I mean, I have opportunities every day, so I'm just telling you a few. Di and I, um, it's a long story, and it's too long for this, but my kid said you need a you need some place to go when you retire. I said, I like champagne or band. I'm not leaving. They still said, you need a place. So I ended up buying this little rental house out on the beach in North Carolina, but it has to be rented like all the warm days, like from May through September to pay for it. So theoretically, it's doing pretty good and everything until September 30th when Hurricane Ian visited now, that Hurricane Ian, I'm sure it was the devil because it, it moved in a snake-like form. And so I'm positive the enemy was after us. But it sends a wave over an 8-foot, $40 million berm on this 10-mile-long island, comes over the, the berm, washes the berm out of the way, and floods the, this rental house, has a little swimming pool, floods the swimming pool, puts a whole bunch of sand in it, and the houses are built on stilts, and you can't live on the first floor, but the first floor had a washer, dryer, and hot water heater. Puts two foot of water down there. I have renters in the upstairs. They're not happy. I have renters coming in and thinking, oh, boy, I'm, I'm, the gaskets are starting to quiver and the needle's pointing into red. And I tell Diane and Julie, I'm headed out there. I'm going to straighten this mess out. Julie just instantly says, no, you're not. You're staying home. You're preaching on Sunday the night, and you're not going out there to do that kind of work. And I had the common sense to realize, wow, that had to be the Holy Spirit talking. <laughs> Let me just slip aside here a second. Guys, I want to give you a hint. That particular woman in your life, I'm usually your wife, but it could be your girlfriend or something, they often hear from the Lord but we're often too stubborn to listen. And it's like, 
Sometimes the Holy Spirit and my wife sound a lot alike. <laughs> so uh, that's just, that's for, that's for free, but it's really good advice, and I'll tell you why to listen in just a moment. So at any rate, so I, I'm, starting, I'm still worried, though, and then the Lord says, I thought I taught you Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. And the peace of God will flood your mind. Oh, yeah. Back to Psalm 34. I'm in deep trouble again. Help, Lord. <laughs> There's water coming over, literally coming over the dam, and I need help. So, uh, you know, again, I have a temptation. Am I going to calm down and let this Lord start sorting this out, or am I going to panic and get going? See, the slowing down is so important. Romans 14, 17 says, the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. I'm thinking, okay, now that, this house isn't exactly the kingdom of God, but you could re say that verse, the kingdom of God is not a house in the Carolinas. It's righteousness, peace, and joy. And the Spirit is involved. So I'm sitting there, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to calm down. I'm going to pray this thing through, Lord. Show me wisdom step by step. And then he reminded me in Galatians 5, 24 and 25, Keep in mind, though we who belong to Christ have already experienced crucifixion. Very few people preach that, but you died when Christ died. You died. You also rose when he rose. That's the really good news. For everything connected with your self-life was put to death on the cross, crucified the Messiah. Catch this verse. If the Spirit is the source of your life, and I'm saying he's the source of my life, we must also allow the Spirit to direct every aspect of our lives. And see, we want to say, well, you can direct the ones I don't want to take care of. No, he says, I want to direct it. See, he died so he could live in you, resurrect a new creature that never existed with a spirit God living inside of you. And you're a being that is weird. You've had two fathers. I know it got real quiet, didn't it? If, if you think you're the same as your unsaved neighbor, you missed something. You're radically different. You're built for a whole different world. You happen to be living on planet Earth. You're trapped on planet Earth, but this isn't even your home, Paul says. You're just here as an ambassador. Well, have that in mind. So, so I, I realize I got to get out of the way. I've been crucified. I got to start listening to the Spirit. So I calmed down. I, I just started praying. I said, Lord, show me what to do. It was amazing how the people on the other end. Now, I, we have a management agency. I have a handyman. There were insurance companies involved. Everybody went way beyond the call of duty. Things started coming back together. I have a water heater. It was underwater. It's an electric water heater. I have no idea how it started working again. I never heard of such a thing. Now, I tried to pray over the washer and dryer, and they seem to have died. <laughs> so my resurrection powers are only at one-third level, uh, <laughs> but we, we'll take it. See, again, God gave me wisdom. Proverbs 4, 7, he reminded me, wisdom is the most important thing. Get wisdom. Where do you get wisdom? You pray and ask for it. People show up and help you. They, God shows you what to do next. See, we're co-creating this thing. Does he care about my beach house? Yes, because I care about it. He cares about my relationship. Why? Because I care about my relationship. He cares about everything in our lives. Again, how would you respond in these situations? Check yourself. What do you do? Some of you are in over your head. You're at the help Lord stage. I was talking to a businessman recently. This is a great story that exactly fits. And he invests a lot of money. And sometimes he invests with the state of Illinois. I know that the state actually invests in new enterprises, stuff like that. He invests with the state. And so he and his company had an, an opportunity to do several million dollar investment with the state. And the state... Uh, wanted to do it as well, but they had a strong list of requirements, some of which leaned toward the ungodly side. And as Christians, he and his partners said, we can't do this. So they wrote to the state and said, we want to invest with you and be a partner, but these, these paragraphs have to come out of the contract. And the state wrote back and said, no, we won't do it. So they were still praying, and one night, one of the partners had a dream, and the Holy Spirit said, do not invest with them. So they called the state and said, we're out. Even though it costs us money, we're out. The state 
this is shocking, in 24 hours reverse course and said, okay, we'll take your revisions, we'll take out those provisions you don't like, and we will still invest with you. What a wonderful story. See, that was a case where the Spirit actually gave the dream. Now, let me tell you the bad side of the Spirit giving a dream. Di and I had invested thousands of dollars in an investment. Di gets a dream, get out of that investment. There are bad people in it. I informed her, that's not the Lord. We lost the money. Guess who's been saying he's sorry for a long time? And I don't have the money. Not only am I sorry, I don't have the money. The the Spirit was trying to show us what to do. Okay, the Spirit is on your side. He loves you more than you love you. He loves your investments more than you love your investments. He, He wants you to prosper. Why? How many of you parents want your kids to go out and be broke? Why? Because you have to take care of them all the time. (laughs) You want your kids to prosper more than you prospered, so maybe they can take you to dinner once in a while. Right? See, just stop and think a little bit. God's on our side. He's working on us. He's trying to help us. He's trying to give us all the blessings that we ever dreamed of. He wants shalom for us. Shalom is this amazing Hebrew word that means good in every realm. You're good physically, mentally, spiritually, socially, relationally, financially. There's no demons bugging. It's just life. It's the free life he promised us. Now, it also says in the Bible, the righteous will have many trials and tribulations on the way, but will be delivered. That's how you get your testimony. So, again, let me summarize this. The Holy Spirit wants to help us. He's bigger, better, more beautiful than you ever dreamed. He's in there. You're in union with Christ. He wants to make you a spectacle for the world to see. Why? So that they'll look at you and say, wow, what do you got going on? Whatever it is, I want what you got. Give it to me. Can you imagine that? For the most part, they think we're nuts now. Why? Because we're not living the way the Bible wants us to live. They could say Jesus was nuts, but he could produce. We are to be little Christ in the face of this world. Isn't that good news? So if you're going to have the Holy Spirit as your helper, do two things. Remember who you are. See, to have confidence the Spirit will come through, remember, you're a child of the King. He loved you so much, he sent, the Father sent Jesus to die so that you could die with him, be resurrected with him, so that when the Spirit comes, he could live inside. That's why he made you righteous, holy, pure. He made you a fit son. He invited you to the dinner table. He took your orphan spirit away, and he said, You're really special, and I have a special plan for you. That's who you are. You need to know that. Number two, you need to know who the Holy Spirit is. He's God. We have one God, three manifestations, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Father is in heaven. Jesus came to earth, now sits at the right hand of the Father, and the Spirit came to touch you, live in you, fill you, equip you, and guide every direction of your life. If the Spirit is the source of your life, he directs everything, right? And do you think I've got that down? After all these years of being a believer, over 50 years as a Christian, no, I have to remind myself all the time. I just about lost it twice in the 50th year. So I have great empathy for those of you that are one, two, three, four, even 49 years into the faith. It's a challenge because we want to do things our own way. You ever seen a two-year-old and you want to help them? And no. I'm doing it myself. And you could do it way better. You could do it in 30 seconds. They'll try for about three hours, and then they'll come crying and can't do it. That's a little bit like we are. See, he wants to remind you of what Jesus said and what, he, what is written. Now, this implies you know some of what he said. It's hard to remind you if you've never heard it. So get in the Bible. Read the Bible. Spend some time in prayer. I read my one-year Bible every day of my life. Why? Because I want to hear from God. Every day I'm looking for one verse that I'm finding out there. Uh, I know many of you don't follow me. I'm not upset that you don't. But every day I tweet out one verse from the daily reading. Why? You think I do it for you. If you catch on to it, that's great. I do it for myself. It reminds me one verse that's really important that I'm going to think about for that day. You know, one of the verses I put up uh, just recently is do all things as though you're working for the Lord. 
See, that just, it gives me direction and guidance and focus and, and everything. So sometimes he'll send people to talk to you, like Julie saying no to me, or he'll send a dream to you. He'll, he'll do whatever it takes to get you doing his stuff if you make him the source of your life. All right? One, other, one more thing. Write your testimonies down. It will help you. Write down the good things God's done for you. Write down the problem. Write down what he said. Write down how you got out of it. And write down the result. I have countless testimonies I've written down. I go back over them. If it's a financial testimony, I look where he bailed me out financially. If it's relational, I look how he bailed me out. Always looking, what did he do? Bethel, the word Bethel in the Bible means I met God there. Churches, songs, you know, people name things Bethel. It means meeting God. Where did you meet God? And when you met him once, you can meet him again. He just wants to change your life. In fact, he wants to take over your life. You have a choice. Do you want him to take over, or do you want to take over? There's a famous line John Wimber heard one time. He's the founder of the vineyard. God said to him, you've seen what you can do. Now do you want to see what I can do? I suggest all of us choose to see what God can do. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, you're the best. And we just all say, Lord, we want to see what you can do now. We've tried. Most of our lives are less than where they ought to be because we've weighed too much of ourselves and not enough of you. Lord, our purpose is to go with you, let you lead, guide, direct every step, every thought, every action, and take us into the fullness of everything you have. Lord, put your arms around us. Holy Spirit, take charge and deliver us from the mess we get ourselves in. In Jesus' name, amen.